Okay, follow a special request by a viewer over Fampton. I'm creating a video tutorial on how to model a two-door style or medieval style house. Now, this completed house which I did uh, took me about a couple of hours to do and so I won't be able to show you every single step uh, in how I created this. So, uh, I'll just have to say that for this house, I started out with a reference picture uh, several reference picture which I've uh, found on the internet okay and uh, and I use that as a reference to create uh, the house and uh, so in order to keep this video short so I will be uh, creating a simpler looking house instead so uh, we'll be creating something like this which I hope uh, I can uh, complete this uh, within the next 15 to 20 minutes okay so let's just get started so let me just reset the scene and we'll start by getting uh, rid of this default cube and then I'm going to turn on the uh, screencast keys now this feature is uh, only uh, available in a script okay which I've installed for my blender so the script is uh, once you install it you have to go to the add-ons under the 3d view okay it's called the 3d view screencast keys you can google for this uh, 3d view screencast keys and add it okay if you want to uh, display the key presses or mouse presses so to do that you just turn on start display and now whatever I do to the mouse or type the space bar uh, you can even reposition uh, the display okay so I'm gonna just push this up a little bit okay and I like to put it on top here okay so now you can see whatever uh, uh, key presses I do or whatever uh, mouse actions I've done Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a simple plane. Okay, I'm going to press Shift C to center the cursor, then press Shift A, and then create a plane. All right, and then I'm going to just scale this up a bit. I'm going to go to Edit Mode by pressing Tab, then press S, then holding down the Control so it will snap to the grid. Okay, right now I'm just holding down the Control and then moving the cursor until it snaps to the grid. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to uh, insert a bunch of edge loops okay so I always start with two two edge loops here and then I'm gonna press S for scale followed by Y then holding down the control I will you notice that it snaps in steps so I'm gonna snap a couple of steps until it is about this size so now I'm gonna insert edge loop around across this area here so press control R move the cursor down here roll your uh, middle mouse roller up once and then left mouse click to plant the uh, edge loops then press S followed by X because we want to scale it along the x-axis and then again holding down the control let it snap one step two steps okay so now we have this section looking like this okay next uh, we want to create uh, enough uh, cuts so that we can later extrude the windows and the door so I'm gonna insert edge loop again then roll up the mouse once so you got two edge loops, press, press S, followed by Y, holding down the control, and then I'm just going to create another step maybe around here. And then again, control R again, and then just create two edge loops, press S, followed by Y, control R again, or rather con uh, holding down control and then move your cursor. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat again, adding two edge loops, S followed by Y, okay and then one more time okay you guys will uh, understand why I'm doing this later on as I progress so I'll we'll just create a bunch of columns here like this and now I'm gonna do it across here S followed by X holding down the control snap a bunch of uh, steps here control R again okay let me undo that Control R, then roll up mouse again, then press S, followed by, in this case, is the X axis, holding down the control, and we got a bunch of steps here. Okay, so maybe I just want to insert one more loop here, scale followed by X, and then another one here, S followed by X, one, two. Okay, so now the next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of all, get rid of all the faces uh, inside here. Okay, before I do that, um, I want to insert one edge loop right here. 
Okay, so this will make... I'm going to use the mirror method again. So I'm going to get rid of half of these faces here. I'm going to the top view by pressing number pad 7, pressing 5 to go to orthographic view. Then I'm going to control tab, switch over to face selection mode, press A to this to uh, A select to deselect everything, press B and then select half of this and just delete away the faces. And I'm just gonna apply a mirror modifier. So I just need to work on the half. Okay, notice that I'll always delete across the x-axis. So the default mirror is always along the x-axis, which is represented by this red line. Okay, so let's continue. So let's go to edit mode again. Uh, I'm going to wireframe mode and then I'm going to press C to bring out the circular selection two. And then basically uh, use it like a paintbrush and uh, select the faces which I'm going to delete away. And then I'm just going to press X and delete away the faces. So I'm left with this outline here. Okay, next I want to uh, select all and then uh, holding down to uh, the middle mouse, I think it's middle mouse click. Okay, uh, wait, let me just press A to D slide again. Uh, press B, middle mouse click and drag to deselect the face, okay, uh, which I want the doorway to come out from. Okay, so now I'm just going to pull out the brick foundation. So I'm going to just press E and then just pull out one brick uh, section. Okay, I'm going to press E again to form the timber section and press E again to form another section of the wall. Okay, so now I want to form the windows. So I'm going to uh, hold down the shift, right mouse click to deselect the faces, which I want uh, the windows to appear. Maybe these two little tiny windows here. Okay, and then I'm going to press E again. Okay, so I've got a windows forming and then press E again to form another um, uh, timber foundation. Press E again to extract another section. Okay, and then right now I'm going to join the the sections here. All right, so basically create a bridge between these two faces uh, from here to here. Okay, so uh, for this, for the joining of the two to work, you have to turn on a function called bridging. So if you go to File, User Preferences, under the Add-ons, under the mesh category, make sure you turn on mesh loop tools. Make sure that this is checked. All right. So when this is checked, uh, you'll be given uh, a very powerful set of mesh editing tools. Okay. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this face here, this face here, and then I'm going to press X to delete away the face. Then I'm going to switch over to edge mode, holding down the Alt and right mouse click so that the edge loop is selected here. Holding down the Shift Alt, right mouse click, so that these two edge loops are selected. Then you press the shortcut key W, and if your add-ons is activated, the loop tools will appear right on top. And then we're going to use the bridge tool to cover these uh, gaps here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same for the two faces here. Press X to delete with the face. Switch over to edge mode. Holding down the Alt, right mouse click to select the holes here. Shift Alt to add on another selection and then again press W, loop tools and then bridge. Okay, so for the mirror tools here, uh, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to select these two faces and then I'm just going to press E and then extrude it until they touch each other. Okay, just before they touch each other, I'm going to press X to, to delete away the faces. Okay, and then I'm going to turn on clipping in the mirror uh, modifier. Okay, and then I'm going to go to vertex mode. Okay, and then press B to select these vertex and then bring it in until the both of the uh, the mirror edge touch each other. So once they touch each other and we're clipping on, it will stay stuck together. Okay, so now um, I'm going to create a bridge between here and here. So I'm going to go to face, select these two faces, press X to delete away the faces. Then go to edge mode again, Alt, right mouse click. Shift, Alt, right mouse click, then press W and bridge it again. Okay, so now we have an uh, entire timber section that is running through here. So now I'm going to switch over to vertex mode and then press Z to go to wireframe mode. Press 1 or you can press uh, 3 to go to uh, the side view. Press A to deselect. Press B to border select the top uh, vertices here. And then you can simply press E to extrude another section. 
Okay. So this is uh, depending on how high you want the roof uh, to be. Okay, so the next step you want to do is uh, you want to use the spin tool. Okay, I'm going to uh, use the spin tool by uh, positioning uh, the cursor here. So I'm going to select one of the vertex here, press shift S, and then cursor to select it. Okay, and then I'm going to select, uh, change my selection to the face mode because right now what I'm trying to do is I want to create a the roof. All right, so I'm going to uh, create a simple roof using the spin tool. Okay, so I'm going to select the edge, not this one. I'm going to select the edge here. And actually come to think of it, I can actually select these edges. Well, to make my job easier, let me just go to the side view. Press B and then just grab all the faces. Now, the next step is very important. Make sure you're in the correct view orientation. Currently, when I press 1, okay, this is actually my the side view, all right. Uh, although pressing one is the front orthographic view as shown here, so uh, uh, you have to be at this orientation for the spin tool to work. And right now, if we want to spin to create a geometry here, we are spinning. We want to want it to spin along the axis of the cursor, which we have already positioned here. Okay. So if your cursor is not there, make sure you just select one of the sub objects. Right, the tip here can be edge, or it could be the vertex and then press shift s and then position the cursor to select it all right so now let's go to the front view okay so and then i'm going with the faces selected i'm going to use the spin tool okay which is can be very very useful i'm going to activate spin and uh, the default is going to spin 90 degrees and uh, downwards clockwise so i want to want it to spin the other way so you can adjust the values here on the tools tool section here so that uh, it meets right at the center so i'm going to enter a value of negative 90 and uh, we're not going to we're not creating a barn here so we're going to reduce the number of steps so you can actually reduce it down until it, it becomes like a normal roof like this or you want if you want your roof to be a little bit interesting just give it two sections like that all right so um essentially you already have a roof for your house and uh, you can actually delete away these faces okay with the faces still selected you can just press x and delete away the faces because the mirror is going to take care of the empty space later on okay so you can see the really the usefulness of mirror okay next uh, we want to create a radiating uh, timber section that runs across here so i'm going to control r insert one edge loop and then just uh, put one edge loop right about here okay and then uh, I'm going to select one of the edges here, okay, and I'm going to press uh, Control E, and then choose the option uh, slide edge slide, so I can slide the edge down to maintain the okay the uh, the thickness of the the timber, okay. I also have another special uh, tool called vertex slide. Let me see what I can find it. Just press V. E R T E X. Okay, apparently my vertex slide is not working, so I'm going to try to go to normal and then try to move this vertex along the normal axis. Okay, this is just some nitpicking, tweaking of mine, just to get this thing looking a bit parallel. All right, so I'm going to do it, do the same to the other side here. Okay, I'm going to go to edge mode, select this edge, then press Ctrl E and edge slide and then just bring it down slightly. Go to vertex mode and then since I'm in normal mode, I can just pull it down slightly. Okay, so now what you want to do is uh, you want to start to give uh, assignments, okay, material assignments to this house. Okay, so uh, so this, this part can be a little bit tricky. So... Uh, what we want to do is that we want to select these bars that run across the house, okay? And uh, later we're going to assign it with a uh, timber material, okay? So actually, um, I could I should have added another edge loop right across here, and maybe this here, and like so. Okay, so now let's go to face mode, and then we'll start selecting the timber section. So you have to use your Alt right mouse click 
to select the edge loops. So holding down the Shift Alt, just keep on selecting the edge loops that runs across uh, the entire house. You're gonna select the edge loop that runs across here. Okay, one that runs across here. This one, this one, this one. So you must hold down your Alt, Alt and uh, Shift, right mouse click, and just keep on selecting oops and if you make a mistake just press ctrl z and then continue selecting uh, the the timber section okay so just click once and then click again okay so now we selected the uh, timber section of the house uh, we are going to assign it with a material so we go to your material editor create a new material by clicking on this plus sign here and then we're going to click on new material, give it a color. So we're going to give it a brown color because we want this to be the wooden beams. And then uh, we just hit assign. Okay, then we're going to press the shortcut key control I to inverse the selection. And then we're going to add a new material to this object. Okay, add it a uh, new material to the assignment, then create this new material. And we're just going to use the default white and then just assign it. Okay. So now you have a uh, sort of the wooden timber and the white material showing through like this. And the best part is you can select by material. For example, I can click back the uh, original brown material and I, click, I can click on this select button here and it will select the uh, brown timber for you. So I'm going to press A to deselect, deselect everything and then with the brown material selected then click select. So only the beams are now selected. Okay, so now what we want to do one step to make the beams pop out a little bit. So uh, I'm going to press E to extrude, all right? But when you extrude it, okay, when you move your mouse, it's going to extrude where the mouse goes. So I want you to press right mouse click so the extrusion jump back in. Now, how do you tell whether your faces has been extruded? If you look carefully here, you can see uh, there are dots here. That means that their faces being compressed down here. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is to press Alt S so that you can use the string flatten mode to extrude these selected faces just slightly out okay out of the surface okay so you will extrude according to the normals okay so when you look at the house right now you can see uh the the what the uh, the beams are protruding out a little bit Okay, of course, right now, uh, I mean, it, the house looks kind of interesting, but of course, you can tweak it further by inserting edge loops and reassignments. For example, uh, obviously, the top here, if you can, if I can insert edge loop, it look much nicer. So what you can do, you can go to edit mode, you can press Control R, insert one edge loop that runs the entire course around here. Go to face mode, holding down the Alt again and right mouse click this entire section. And then you can also assign it with the same material. Okay, so once you have done that, uh, let's uh, tweak this further. Okay, let's make this house uh, look much better because right now it's not been signed with any particular materials. So what I did was I went to uh, uh, this material website, okay, the uh, Blender Materials Repository, and I searched for a bunch of materials. I searched for uh, old brick material. Okay, you can type brick and then you should be able to find uh, lots of materials on this website. So one of the materials which I've used was the, for the old brick. So I want to use the old brick for the lower section of my house. So I've already downloaded the material. So I'm going to assign it to like the uh, lower half section of this house. So I'm going to go to file and then I'm going to uh, select append. That, uh, it is sort of like a blender's version of import. And then uh, I'm going to go to uh, the folder containing my uh, material then I click on the material then I click on the material folder select the old brick material double click on it so right now it's loaded into the material uh, browser here you can see that with a zero next to it meaning uh, no objects has been assigned with this material yet so first we need to select the areas which we want the brick material to be shown so we can use the uh, circular selection tool first of all press A to deselect everything first and then you can uh, manually okay right mouse click holding down the shift and just just click on the panels which you want the uh, brick material to show up okay so 
Now for this to work, your material, it, it really depends on the type of material you're using. Now if you're using a uh, procedural material, you don't really have to use uh, uh, the texture mapping, UV texture mapping to get it to work. But if your material comes with an image and uh, UV mapping, uh, then uh, you have to assign UV mapping for the materials. Okay, so let's change this to an image editor. Okay, so with this selected, okay, because this is a rather cubic uh, arrangement, I'm going to use a cubic projection for this uh, section here. So I'm going to press U to UV unwrap, and then I'm going to use the cube projection. Okay, so it unfolds all these faces out nicely. And then I'm going to add a new material, and then create a new material, and then choose the old brick material, and then I'm going to assign it. Okay, so now these faces have been assigned, okay, these selected faces have been assigned with the brick material. Okay, so let's just do a test render. Let's go to the camera view, okay, and see whether the brick texture appear as they are. So I'm going to select the camera and then just pull it out a little bit and then just press F12 to render. Okay, so you can see a bunch of straight lines. That means the uh, UV uh, assignment is wrong. Okay, so we have to do some tricks to the material. So let's select the house so that the material shows up. With the brick material selected, click on the texture assignments. Okay, under the texture assignment, you can see here, which is in an image. Okay, so if you scroll down, okay, you can see the mapping here. Instead of using generator, you can use UV. All right, so let's try rendering it again. Ah, now you can see the brick is appearing much nicer. Okay, so uh, the lighting here is not very nice, so I'm going to create another light. Okay, shift D to duplicate another light. You go to the top view and then just position one light here and one light here. Again, okay, and then press F12 to render it again. Okay, the brick looks uh, pretty good. Okay, so but now I want my the wooden timber to look more realistic. So I want to assign a old wooden uh, texture to it. So I'm going to append in another new material. Okay, so let's go and bring in the material. Go from file, append, and navigate to the folder containing. I got an old worn out wooden material, so I'm going to select that material and double click on it. So it's named material.001. Okay, so let's go back to the material editor. Select the house, go to the material editor, and if you click on the material browser, you should be able to see the wood material. Uh, over here. Okay, it's automatically been renamed uh, material.002. Okay, so I'm going to reassign the wood material. So at first I select the wood material represented by this brown. Okay, and then instead of this brown color, I'm going to click on the material browser and then change it to the wood material. Okay, so okay, I have a problem right now because I did not choose on select. So right now the whole house is assigned with this material, which is not what I want. So let me undo that. Okay, so I should have gone on to the material first. Okay, and then go to edit mode, press A to deselect, and then select. Okay, only the wooden beams here. Then click on the material browser and then change it to the wood material. Okay, so let's do another test render. Ah, now you can see the wood material appearing, but you can see that some of the wood materials are appearing as streaks whereas some are appearing quite nicely. So again, this is the result of the UV mapping. So uh, without uh, complicating things, I'm just going to use a simple uh, UV mapping because since this is in a very, this uh, house itself is like a cubic structure. Okay, I'm going to use a uh, UV unwrap and then use the cube projection okay, to uh, unwrap, okay, unwrap the house. So this is the uh, projection of the material and then uh, for the texture map of this material again you have to switch it to UV for each of the texture maps so this one it will take some time you have to change it to UV okay and the texture here I'm going to change it to UV as well this noise texture I'm going to change it to UV and so on okay so make sure all of it has been changed to UV. 
All right, so now I'm going to do another test render again. Ah, so now you can see the material looks much nicer. But in ca by careful inspection, you see that uh, the wood is going vertically down. Okay, uh, I'll prefer this, the grain of the wood to go this direction. So I'm going to go back to the uh, UV assignments. Okay, I'm going to change one of the image here. And then with everything selected, I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. Press R, then press 90. Then press F12 again to render. Ah, okay, now this looks uh, better uh, to my liking. All right, so essentially uh, the house is done, okay? So if you want to do something more to the roof, like you want to assign a new material or if you want to uh, assign a straw material or even a, a tiled material, you can use the array modifier to create a bunch of tiles like uh, what I did in this other tutorial here or rather this, dem uh, this example here. Okay, so basically it's just a simple uh, uh, a simple cube which I flattened and then I use the array to just duplicate pieces and then I use a boolean tool to trim off the excess just uh, so, or so to create the, uh, the roof. Now if you want to create a cross beam like this, I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. For example, this uh, uh, triangular beam, okay, this beam that cuts across like this. So let's go back to the model. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a simple one. Okay, let's say I want to create a beam that runs from here to here. Okay, you need to select the house. Okay, you need to insert uh, one edge loop here, one edge loop here. Okay, and then very carefully go and select one of the faces here and then press X to delete away this face. And then select, select this face here, press X to delete away the faces. So now we got two holes here. But you'll notice that I can select the holes here holding Alt, right mouse click. Okay, remember to hold down the Shift, Alt and right mouse click to select the two holes here. And remember our bridging tool, just press W, loop tools and bridge. And instantly you have, okay, a beam that runs right across. Okay, let me just position uh, the camera here. Let me just bring this light. Okay, let me change this manipulation to global move the light here okay and change my camera position here control alt number pad zero okay and let's do a test render and you can see the cross beam is now being created okay so that is how you create the support beams. Okay, so if you want to assign a new material to the roof, okay, you can grab select the entire section here. Let me just go to edit here and go to face selection mode. Go to wireframe mode so that the back faces will be selected. You can press B, a box select to select all the top faces here. I'm going to press A to deselect again because I do not want the back faces to be that small bit to be selected. Okay, okay just one more one more face that needs to be selected okay so you can simply go to the material section here all right you can uh, create another new material okay we just temporarily assign it with uh, a gray material okay so if I render this okay I, apparently I have not assigned it yet so let me just try assigning it again okay and let's yeah, so now you can see the roof is now, it, it has a new material. Okay, so this in this tutorial, I mean, you can see uh, the different ways to uh, assign different materials to the same mesh. Okay, and also uh, how useful the loop selection tool is. Okay, so I hope uh, this tutorial will give you enough information to create your own Tudor style house. Okay, and uh, you can keep on experimenting to add more details until it becomes something like this. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial and uh, if you like it, uh, keep on subscribing. I'll try to uh, come up with more new tutorials uh, every week. Thank you for watching.